Hello everybody, this is Bob Campbell from On One Software. Um, today I'm going to show you uh, a side of Perfect Mass that um, not everybody uses all the time. Um, and that's really creating a mask to apply an effect rather than creating a mask to take out a complete background and replace it with another one. Um, and the effect that we're going to create is another part of um, the suite actually inside of Perfect Layers. So the image that you can see on your screen is a spooky looking tombstone um, and what we're going to do is to cut it out, apply a new layer with the same image on and in between slip in a couple of fill layers that we're then going to manipulate with brushes and with the masking bug. So it's a little bit of a different sort of uh, departure, if you will, from using the standard perfect mask. Um, but let's see how we get on with this. Uh, first of all, we need a new picture, of course. So um, I'm going to just double click on the original file and just say new. OK, so we have a picture of our tomb and it's sitting there in all its glory in a beautiful old uh, churchyard in the middle of um, Derbyshire's uh, Peak District. So this is uh, the sort of place where they buried lots of victims of the uh, plague many years ago. This tomb isn't, I don't think, that old, but a lot of the uh, gravestones around are from that uh, period in the 1600s, 1700s. So anyway, let's get on with this. So I need to go into Perfect Mass. So I'm in the standalone version of Perfect uh, Photo Suite 7.5. Uh, and to get into Perfect Mask, all I need to do is this, just a single click on Mask. It takes me into Perfect Mask, the masking process really inside of the suite. Um, so Perfect Mask has several different tool sets to use when making masks. Um, I'll quickly show you a couple of them actually, but we're going to focus on the pen tool in this particular case. So for instance, what the software did, as soon as I opened the image, it analyzed the picture and broke it up into segments. And those segments can be seen at the bottom left of the workspace where it says all layers in that little black box. Just move up to segments so you get a view of the image. And immediately the image changes into something that reminds me of uh, being a kid with painting by numbers uh, sets that we used to get uh, given as presents. So kind of oil, not, not everybody in the UK that is, but certainly me, because I do like painting. So we've broken the image into kind of component color sections. So the grass looks kind of lumpy and bumpy. The tombstone is made up of lots of different things. Now that process is designed to enable you to use basic keep and drop brush sets. Without selecting any colors, you can just select the drop brush, which is the default setting, and then wipe it down an area of what you expect to be a standard series of segments, and it starts to wipe away the image. So I'm just moving across a few areas of the picture because remember I want to cut out the tomb and I'm just seeing what the software is going to give me and already I've got mm, an okay kind of mask. It's not terribly accurate uh, but it's giving me a lot of help in the cutout process. Okay. Now you can adjust the amount of segments that you have in your image. So for instance, if I increase segments now up to say 30, I get that little um, bar again that tells me that something's happening. It's breaking up the segmentation even further. So if I look at the segment process, now I have a lot of very blocky colors. So this should help me make a better mask of the image. Now note, please, you cannot mask or at least see the mask working with the segmentation process in view. Always switch it back to all layers, otherwise you'll be disappointed. Okay, so let's try a little bit more of the mask now that we've changed the segmentation um, percentage effectively, so we're making the colors far more blocky, and therefore, yes, we can make a better mask. This is a very simple masking process. It's a bit like, if you will, um, the magic eraser inside of Photoshop. It's cutting out the image for me, but it's not really as good as I want it to be. There's still a lot of uh, detritus in there. There's still a lot of little bits and pieces. How can I tell? We'll go back down to the all layers box and this time view the mask as a grayscale view, okay? And now we see a black and white view. 
I've got a black background where the mask is behind the tomb. But look, I can see lots of little bits and pieces of stuff there. And I'm going to have to take that out if I want to make a good mask of the tomb. So this particular process isn't doing a fantastic job for me, I think you'll agree. I'm going to go back to All Layers. I'm just going to nip up to the pull-down menu at the top of the screen under Mask and say Reset Mask. And that's going to put everything back in place. It's the way I started. Okay. Now, obviously there are other ways of making the mask. One of my all-time favourites is the ability to keep and drop colours. So for instance, if I say, let's click on the Keep Colour eyedropper and select some of the colours along the top of the tomb, then you see them appearing in the Keep palette. Okay. So I've got some nice bright buttercupy sort of yellowy colours and a nice light grey. Let's go down to the little drop pipette tool and let's say drop those pictures of the darker stone and say the green of the grass. Now select the magic brush which is the only brush in the tool palette that will analyse these colours to make the mask and see what happens here. Ah, oh, much better mask. Okay, much better. In fact, I'm reasonably impressed. But let's just take a look at this with the grayscale view. And if we go to mask grayscale, again, I've picked up a lot of information from the top of the tomb. And OK, I can kind of brush that out if I want to. But it's not making a selection quickly for me in the way that I really want. So once again, go to reset mask. I'm going to delete the colors from my color palettes. So I have no worry for the pen tool when we start to use that. And remember, I'm still in grayscale mode, so it's gone white. Just move down to all layers and you reveal your picture. Now, I'm going to dispense with color. I'm going to dispense with the brushes because I'm not really happy with the selection. Instead, I'll use the pen. And remember, some images are going to be perfect for pen because they're going to have nice edges. Others are just going to be plain difficult. Better to use the brushes. You've got selections of different tools to use as you need them, OK? Now, if I start clicking with the pen tool, notice something interesting about it. I'm just going to run up the side of the tomb, the back left-hand corner. You can see the pen moving up it now as I work. And I'm going to click as close to the edges that I want to select as I can. And I'll make one last click right up to the end of the lip of that corner, that far corner of the tomb. Now every time I make a click, the little line that's joining each of the data points that I've created is running along the edge of a line of coloured pixels, in this case the darker pixels around the edge of the tomb. This is quite nice. What this brush is doing is automatically selecting around the edges of prominent colour. Okay, It would get much more difficult if I wanted to use this tool in, say, very fine areas where the colours were very similar. But I'm going to move from one data point now and run right along to that little tip of moss, I think it is, right on the end of the tool, uh, on the end of the far corner of the tomb. And yeah, I've got a selection along that line. That's quite nice. Now I'm going to carry on. I'm going to carry on to the edge of that big lump of moss that's sitting right at where the pen is pointing at the moment, and it hasn't made a good selection of that, so I'm going to undo it. Then what I'm going to do is just select along the top of the moss to make a better, cleaner selection. Okay. Now, to be honest, it's difficult to get a nice edge at 100% resolution. I need to zoom in a little bit so I can see what's happening. Notice when you hit the magnifying glass, the data points and the line that you've already selected disappears. Not great but it will come back. Honest. Let's click on the pen again, and now the line reappears. Okay. So now I can say, okay, I'm going to be able to select a bit more carefully around this moss and around the edge of the uh, tomb quite accurately. I think I'll make a longer selection now with a single click, and you'll see where the line has actually picked out that little pile of moss on top. It's a pretty accurate mask. Let's do a little bit more of that. Let's move the pen a little bit further away to this little depression in the moss. can't believe I'm talking about moss. And click. And now the line has tried to follow as best it can 
that line along the edge of the top of the moss. And it's not done a bad job, but it's not perfect. Let's make it better. So undo that stroke with a Command Z or go to Edit and Undo at the top of the palette. Using the keyboard shortcuts, Control Z, Command Z is obviously better for us. Let's click, click. So click into the depressions and gradually the pen will follow the line that we're trying to make, a little bit of missed moss. There. Do I need this moss? I probably don't need it in such detail, so I'm not too worried about it. Now, another click. Yes, that's followed the edge. Now, with the mouse button still pressed down, drag. Drag along, and when you get to an edge like that little pile of moss there, stop again, click, little depression, fine. Now drag along, and now dragging along nice and fast, if I move backwards and forwards when I hit a part of the moss that isn't quite selecting the way it should do, don't worry, but keep dragging, and you'll find that the edge of the line tends to correspond quite nicely to the little bits of moss. Those two bits of moss sticking up, I'm going to ignore those. Ooh, but I'm not going to ignore that. I'm going to stop there, click again. Okay. It was just starting to drift off a little bit. Click again, and now drag again. And let's go down. You see how it suddenly snapped to the edge of the bottom of the line there? Let's go around the edge of the, tool, the, the uh, edge of the tomb. And now where we've got a much clearer definition of colour, between the shadow area of the, the tomb and the grass, look, now I can click quite boldly and go where no man has gone before, as Captain Kirk would say. Okay, let's go. Now, I've still got my line selected. When I bring my pen and the cursor back into the image, the line is still there. But when I move it over to the navigator window to move my little box down so I can see more of the edge of the tool, of, of the tomb rather, then the mouse, the cursor disappears for a second, and then it comes back again, and back again, and you can see just clicking how it's kind of running around. And when it misses, you see it's missed a piece of the stonework there, just undo, and then make a smaller selection. So it gradually fills in the area where you really want it to be. Now a lot of the edge of this tomb is pretty tatty. It's not a beautiful, crisp, modern uh, piece of stonework. It's suffering a little bit under uh, an enormous amount of rain in central Derbyshire. But look, I've got a pretty reasonable selection there. Now, what I'll do is I'll zoom out. The line disappears, but don't panic, because when you bring the cursor back, you've still got your pen. Now what I want to do is to make a kind of horseshoe mask of this, so that I keep the tomb clear, but I mask the rest of the image out completely. Don't panic, it should work, <laughs> if I get it right. And I've been known to get this wrong. Now, if I want to close this path and I carry on with the standard perfect mask pen, look what happens. I get a really jiggly line as I kind of try and close this path up. It's a little bit messy. So undo those last three strokes and go back to the base of the tomb and this time move up to the top of the workspace where you get your tool controls and switch to Classic Pen. Now Classic Pen will give me a beautiful straight line selection and I'm going to move around here and around here and to close the path to complete the mask if you will just move over to where you started remember I started on the back corner left hand side you get a nice big bold pink red circle and that says click now and it closes the path of the mask. Gives you a hammer, so the pen changes into a little hammer, so you can effectively knock out the background. Okay? Right. Interesting. The background looks very sharp and very hard. To make a nice mask of this, and a sensitive mask of this, wouldn't it be nice to have it a little bit softer? A softer edged mask? Okay, so just undo with a single command Z, so it hasn't broken the path, the path is still nicely joined, um, but we might want to adjust the hardness of the edge. Let's put it up to very high, and then click on the hammer again. Oh, very soft, very soft edged mask.
So it's the hardness control at the top of the workspace that's dictating whether the mask be very hard, in which case move it down to zero, undo again with a command Z. The path is still connected. If I did another command Z, I'd break the link in the chain of data points, okay? So I don't really want to do that. I could do it for effect, but let's try again. Hammer, very hard edge mask, very hard edge indeed. And it's the hardness of the edge, which I don't think will be very sympathetic to this kind of technique, the technique I want to use. So I'm going to increase the hardness, but only up to about, let's say, 40. So once again, Command or Control Z, hammer comes back into place. As soon as you move the cursor, click. Fairly soft, but not crazily soft. Okay, good. Now, just put a data point in there that I didn't want. Now what I'll do, just to complete the mask, is go to the standard masking brush. The, the standard brush tool. It's a soft edged brush in this case. I can change the feather of the brush to make it a little bit harder or softer. The opacity is set to 100%, so I'm just going to close that path. It means that I don't have to carefully navigate around right around the extreme edge of the image with my pen tool. I can just make a pretty rough selection, and there it goes. And I'll, I'll move back in towards where the tomb is just to soften the edge of the mask at the bottom there. Okay, great. Now, are we finished? No, we're not, because we need to think about that little hole in the tomb. I need to get the mask absolutely right in there as well, because when I fill it full of mist in the background, if I don't have a mask in that part of the image, then I won't see any mist appear behind the, the, the tomb. So it's going to look nice and misty around it and spooky and weird, but there'll be a hole in the middle that'll look like it's bright sunshine looking kind of crazy. So let's make the mask in there as well. And let's zoom in to do that. Okay. Now, you should be able to see, well, the first thing you'll notice is that that hole is not clearly defined. Well, that's my fault. I probably didn't shoot with the image at the best resolution that I could, or depth of field working against me, I couldn't get the focus right inside that hole. OK, I need to be a better photographer. Right, what we're going to do then is go back to the pen, and with the classic pen selected, I'll make my selections no good at all. I don't want a straight line selection. Can I do anything else with the classic pen? Well, I can pull on various things here and just say, OK, let's make a nice sort of Bezier control. The classic pen selection, classic pen, the little box is ticked at the moment, gives me that control over the kind of pen tool that you would use in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, is it Adobe Freehand these days? It used to be Macromedia or someone like that. Aldous many years ago when I started in this business. Um, Corel Draw and a few other uh, companies, I think, use this kind of pen. I don't want to use that kind of pen. The classic pen is great if you're doing you know, cutting out a picture of a globe against a background or glass or something with very fine curves, fit the curves, absolutely. But in this case, with the pen selected, I don't want the classic pen on. I want to use the standard pen. Look at that beautiful selection. A single click. Let's do that again. I'm so impressed with that. I've got to show you again. The first click and then the second click is at the top of that little broken, jagged edge of stone, and you see where the line has selected right up to the edge. That's a beautiful selection. I'm going to go down now to the edge of that little... must be a, 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 a screw or something that's sticking through the top of the stone, an old brass screw, let's say, and then let's just click down here, and immediately the mask isn't working. Right, so undo that last stroke. Go back to the data point, and when the data point is actually accurately selected, you see those little pink marks inside the circle. Click and now drag. And drag it down. And as you drag, you'll notice that the line is adhering even to the very soft edge of that part of the jagged stone at the back of the tomb. This is actually right at the back. So we're kind of looking through the tomb. Yeah. Now do again. Another click. 
and this time drag again. Now leave that data point where it is. Don't worry that little data point. Let's just go and select, make a couple of little selections here. This is so faint and indistinct, I don't think it's going to have any effect on the finished image. Once again though, to close the path, to be able to make the fill and the mask itself, make sure you get that big pink circle. Once you're over the original starting point data point, close the path, there's my little hammer, click, soft edged mask. It's the same softness as the original outside mask, okay? Let's say fit. And now what we'll do is say, I'm pretty happy with that mask. I've done it all fairly uh, accurately, I think, with the pen. I'm reasonably happy with the way it looks. Let's apply it back in my case into perfect layers, okay? Now, in your case, you, sh you could apply it back into Photoshop, into Lightroom, Aperture, Photoshop Elements, whichever program you're working with, and obviously, depending on the version of the suite that you've purchased. But I'm going to go straight back into perfect layers, so I'm in standalone mode. Right, now, what I want to do is put that background back to view so that I can see it. At the moment, it's completely gone. I've obliterated it. I've cut around the foreground, the tomb in, ca in this case, and I've got an empty background with nothing in it. So, double click on the original image. I'm going to bring a copy of the image back into place, back into view. And to do that, all I need to say is add, and it becomes a layer. But look, the layer is on top of the mask. I want the layer in the background. It won't do anything to the image, but it will clearly enable me to start manipulating the mask quite nicely. And to do that, I'm going to go into something in Perfect Layers called a fill layer and create a fill. Now a fill is normally a colour. Um, it can be various bits and pieces actually, but in this case, when I click on fill, it's going to add a new layer for me into the Layers palette and it's going to give me the potential to create an opaque layer, a perfectly white background. Or, better yet, if I go down to around about 50%, I can see a transparent layer now. That's fine. It's white. I can make it any colour that I want. If I click on Fill Colour, I get a colour palette and the colour can be pink. It can be bright red, it can be green, it could be anything. 16.7 million colours to choose from, and I'm just going to plump for white, okay? In fact, that's a little bit pink. Let's just make it, push that arrow up there, make sure it's a nice white colour, and say OK. OK? And now say OK to the colour fill layer setting. Right. Now notice, we have an opacity slider at the bottom of the layers palette and that does the job of once again making the layer very thick and therefore solid white or very thin. So it's adjusting the transparency if you like of that layer and the layer is sitting right behind my tomb and you suddenly get the idea of what I'm trying to do after all this time. I'm actually trying to make a mist in the background, remember the original image um, that's sitting in the browser now above the tomb file that's fine, but I can adjust that opacity, okay? Now, I don't want a solid looking piece of image like this. I don't think it looks good. I can see a kind of line across the left side of the base of the tomb and on the right side as well. It's, it's really uh, unconvincing, I think, as a, as a kind of mist. I'd like to be able to brush that mist in. How can I do that? Use the masking brush. Click on it. Remember, I'm still in Perfect Layers. I haven't gone back into any other program. Perfect Layers is a beautiful creative program in its own right. And now, if I increase the size of the brush, and certainly increase the size of the feather to make it nice and soft, look how the two concentric circles have got much further apart now. If I adjust that feather control, I can make the interior of the brush, the bit where I'll get the most colour, very small. I can increase the size of the brush, obviously. So now the brush gets big, but the feather is enormous. That might be useful, but I'm going to look at that feather control and adjust it quite a lot. So let's reduce the size of the brush and start to mask. Wow, 
I didn't expect that. What the software's doing is painting back through that fill layer. If you think about it, it's doing exactly what you'd expect it to. So what do I do here? I've actually ruined the effect. Well, go to the top of the screen. Top of the workspace, I've got mode, paint in, paint out. That could be useful. Like size controls, feather controls, Wacom controls, that little W there is where I would tell my Wacom to pressure sensitize the size of the brush. So the harder I press, the brush will get smaller or bigger, depending on how you're working. Opacity, feather, opacity, I've got a W there as well, look. So the pressure sensitivity of a Wacom or a Wacom digitizer will apply more or less opacity to the image. That's nice. I've also got a perfect brush control. Click, you get a little tick. I really don't need it. What I do need to do is go over right over to the right hand side where it says invert. Let's click. Wow, that's what I'm trying to do. Inverting the mask gives you access to the ability to paint that mist into the image right around the mask. If I click where the tomb is, nothing's happening because the mask is stopping me painting it. It knows I'm stupid and that I shouldn't paint there, so it's helping me. But that mist doesn't look very natural, I don't think anyway. So I'm going to undo it. And I'm going to keep clicking the undo until it disappears. Or I can just say reset and it puts the mask back to where it was. Okay. Just like um, the resetting in um, Perfect Mask or any of the other programs. So let's just start the process again. I've got my fill layer. Okay, I'm going to make it thick, 100%. Let's go to the brush. Let's start applying it. Let's just invert it. And now say in the mode Paint In, click there. Perfect but not quite, too thick. So undo it, change the opacity of the brush. Okay, and I'm going to put this right down to around about 20%. The feather is okay, but let's see what happens now. Ah, look, very sensitive, very soft painting. It's 20% opaque. It's almost completely transparent. You know, I'm going to push it down a little bit further still, down to about 15, 16, and oh yeah, great. Now it really looks like mist. Look, even in this little hole through the tomb, I can carry on painting my mist. Don't miss anything out, because if you just do something a little bit wrong in this kind of technique, it's not going to look very good. Now, some of you might think this doesn't look very good already. Well, apologies, it's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for it. No, I'm kidding. I just want to show you a technique, and I think it's important to laugh about it if it's not great. I can start again at any time. So if anything goes horribly wrong with this, I'm just uh, changing the size of the brush, by the way, as I work. I'm using the bracket key on the keyboard. The mist is going to be thicker in the background, isn't it? So reduce the size of the brush and just paint some thicker strokes of mist uh, across the tunes right in the back. Maybe even have the mist kind of leaping up out of the background. This is where it starts to get spooky, by the way. If you're of a nervous disposition, don't watch. Because anything could suddenly rise up out of the tombstones and start to give you a hard time. And you probably don't want that. I'm going to put quite a bit of mist in the background here. But I think this is a beautiful technique, don't you? I love it. And because of the mask, the, the mask is quite soft-edged. Remember... We just feathered it slightly, then I get a nice blend between the mist and the tomb. And I'm just going to cover that bit of grass there, because obviously the mist should be kind of streaking in. I mean, this is a beautiful, it's an amazing place. It's hidden from view. It's off the beaten track, this little church with this beautiful, beautiful little uh, graveyard. Some of the tombs are really old. They're buried in trees and undergrowth. I've got some fantastic pictures of them, actually. I'd love to share with people, but I'll uh, maybe stick a couple on Facebook or something like that. But So there's my mist. I think that's looking quite nice. Now, just to finish this off, I'd like a little bit of mist on the ground at the front of the tomb. You'll notice, by the way, that I haven't gone right down to the edge of the mask. 
I didn't really intend to at any point. That's why I didn't carry the mask on around right the front part of the tomb. I didn't need to. I knew that I wasn't going to use that front part at all. So let's. what we'll do now is apply another fill layer. So click on Fill. Again, it's white, so I'm not going to adjust colors. I won't adjust the opacity. Let's just say OK. Right. So now we have a completely new fill layer. In fact, I'm going to put it over the front of the tomb. So I just selected the layer with the new color fill layer in and just dragged it over the top of the existing tomb and of course it's over the top of the existing fill layer and the complete background which is the fourth layer down. Now how do I make a nice sort of film of mist across the front of the tomb? Use this little tool called the masking bug. Just click on it nothing happens to the fill layer, the top fill layer. Notice it's the active fill layer. It's a light grey fill layer so it's, it's active click on the middle of the tomb and we get a beautiful, fantastic, um, soft-edged mask and just click on the little side things. I call them things because I never know what to call them. I actually refer to these as ears sometimes on, an, on a little alien. Turn it round so that we have a beautiful soft-edged mask that's running horizontally across the image and now pull the whole thing down. Click in the middle of the box, drag it down to the bottom of the tomb. So what? You're thinking to yourself, all it's done is to give me a kind of fill layer in the top part, which is already misty. Change the opacity of this, and you'll see the top part almost completely disappear. Actually, now it looks like there's an amazing freezing kind of advection fog, a kind of inverted fog uh, coming down into the ground. Now it really does look spooky. Let's, uh, before we get too panicky, let's put that back there. Now, how can I get that mist... Oh look, the mist is on the bottom of the tomb, but it's also over the top of the background. So once again, move over to that little button, invert. Click. Now the mist suddenly inverts and it fills the hole that this little masking bug was creating, the soft edge mask. Pull it down. Ah, beautiful. It's now working really nicely to put a mist in the base of the image. Let's make it quite intense and let's leave it there. Remember, if you want to move it, just pick it up and move it right to the top. I do like that. I think that looks really nice. It looks really cold and miserable and damp and a very typical English um, autumnal day probably or maybe winter, but I'm gonna put the mist at the bottom just to complete the effect, so that you can see the kind of, ooh, let's use a big word, juxtaposition of the mist in the background, the tomb in the foreground, and of course the mist now right in the foreground. And that's just the effect I was trying to achieve. I think it's probably better than the original image that I showed you. Anyway, that's this little tutorial. Hopefully it's got you familiar with the idea of the pen tool using Perfect Mask. Um, this is Bob Campbell from On One Software in the European office, hence the strange action, accent even, signing off. And uh, hopefully I'll uh, be able to talk to you again. Thanks very much for attending and uh, have fun trying this little technique out with your own images. Cheers.